Welcome to The Joy of World Rhythms, everyone. I'm so glad that you're joining me in this online course presented by Hal Leonard for all of you out there who care about music and you want to do the best for your students and your communities. I'm Colin Das, a music educator, percussionist, and board-certified music therapist, and we're going to be covering a lot in this 40-45 minute course. So here's what's coming up. I'm going to be giving you some looks at the instruments. Congas, bongos, cajon, and djembe are sort of main hand drums. I'm pulling um, from some videos that I already produced called Unboxing World Rhythms. So if you like, you can go look at the rest of those videos after this presentation. But that's where that content is coming from. I'm also going to be pulling content from the World Rhythms curriculum, Kalani's World Rhythms, which is a multimedia project from Hal Leonard, includes a book, downloads, audio, video, lots of stuff. You'll see some of that content as well. And we're gonna be exploring the three main genres of music. So you'll see some percussion ensembles from uh, the curriculum that include Caribbean, West African, and Brazilian styles. So you'll see all the drums and percussion. I'm also gonna be showing you some videos from the unboxing series about the hand percussion, the handheld items, which I think many of you already own. And you'll see maybe some new ways you can use those, learn a few things about techniques, uh, do's and don'ts, you know, how to keep the instruments and your students safe, but also how to get more enjoyment and music out of those instruments. Now, I'm also gonna be sharing some teaching tips with you that come directly from the curriculum. This is a student-centered, holistic, curriculum. It includes more than just drumming. We've got songs from around the world. You can play ukulele, piano, guitar along with it. So I'll touch on that. But also something I'm really excited about is helping you learn from the view of a music therapist um, in terms of how you can bring more value in the form of community, in the form of uh, emotional needs and maybe psychosocial needs, you know, to address some of your students' specific needs in the classroom to make it easier and more enjoyable for them and easier and more enjoyable for you. So I'll be touching on that, giving you some tips, advice, also teaching process. We're doing a lot in this video. So let's get started. Again, thanks for joining me. I want to, you know, just wish you and your families the best of health and happiness during these times. Uh, first up, we're gonna cover some nuts and bolts kind of stuff. So here's a video about one of my favorite instruments, the conga drums. All right, so here's what the head looks like. Again, let me move this up so you see it in the overhead. Uh, you see the World Rhythms logo on the head, Tycoon logo. I think it sounds great right out of the box. You're gonna tune these with a 13 millimeter or half inch open-ended wrench. I'm gonna go over that right now and show you how to tune up the drum. You're gonna take your 13 millimeter or half inch, depending on what system you're using, open-ended crescent wrench like this. Here's what it looks like in the overhead. You're gonna start, well first check the pitch of your drum. This one sounds pretty good, so I'm not really gonna tune it very much. I'm just gonna show you how you would tune it if you were gonna change the pitch. You're gonna start at somewhere, and I recommend, let's just start at the badge, or you can start at the, um, Let's start at the protector, at the lug protector or shell protector. And you're gonna put the wrench on, find the one that fits. Sometimes there's different sizes. So yeah, like this side's a little bigger. This side is the smaller size. And if you wanna tune it up, you're just gonna go um, counterclockwise a little bit. From looking down, you're gonna go counterclockwise. And you're, you're gonna go around in a circle. You don't have to go in a star pattern or anything. You're gonna go once around the drum and tune each lug nut the same amount until you get back to the beginning. So I'm here, this is a five lug drum, so you only have to do it five times, and then check the pitch. Okay, if you're tuning it up, you can, you can leave it there. If you're tuning it down, just turn the lugs the other way, and then before you check the pitch, give it a little tap in the middle, or you know, hit it in the middle that'll help seat the head and then that'll be the resting pitch. Some people ask me, do I need to tune the drums down when I'm done playing them? If you tune them up so where they're pretty high and tight, 
it's not a bad idea to relax the heads a little bit, especially if you're not going to be using the drums for a while. But if you're kind of using them a lot all the time playing, you don't have to tune them up and down and up and down every single time you use the drums. Now let's learn how to tune a pair of drums so they sound like a set. Okay, I've got two drums. You see one is a little bit smaller. This would be the conga. This would be the tumba. I've got an interval between the drums, right? Because they're different sizes and they're tuned a little bit differently. Determine the interval. Do, 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 do. I'm saying that that's like a minor third or three half steps. Um, I might want to make that a little bit wider. So I can either tune the high drum up a little, right? The smaller drum up, or I can tune the, the larger drum or the lower drum down. I'm kind of wanna, wanting to go for about a fourth or a major third or something. So let me focus on the larger drum. In this case, I think these are already pretty high. So I'm not going to go higher. I want to go a little bit lower and I'm going to start here and turn the lug nut about a quarter turn. Um, from where I'm looking down on it, I'm turning it clockwise and I'm going to go five, right? Because these are five lug drums and I'm getting back to where I started. And because I'm tuning the drum down, I want to give it a little thwack. That's a technical word, thwack, uh, in the middle. So now we're at a major third, right? Ba -be -be -be. If you want a different interval, you can just go up or down, tune the low drum down, tune the high drum up, however you want to get there is up to you. But you want to have your congas basically, I would say a major third, it could be a minor third if you like that. Minor third, major third, perfect fourth, even a fifth apart is okay. If you start getting wider than a fifth, uh, they sound like they maybe don't belong together anymore. It's a little bit too far. If you get too close together, again, it doesn't sound like a set. It sounds like one drum that's in tune and another drum that's sort of almost in tune, but you want to have variety. That's why we have more than one conga, so we can have a melody. These are a melodic instrument, not unlike the timpani, um, which is another set of drums that are often tuned to an interval of a fourth, coincidentally, all right? That's the overview. These are the world rhythms, congas by Tycoon Percussion. Um, by the way, whenever I'm giving you a, a little bit of a teaching tip, I'll be playing some of the music from the Kalani's world rhythms in the background. So that's what you're hearing right now. We've got six tunes in the curriculum, two from the Caribbean, two from Brazil, two from West Africa. So you'll hear those in the background. And by the way, all of the ukulele accompaniment instructions and chords and everything, um, I have videos for that on my website, kalanimusic.com. You can go there if you're more interested in the ukulele part. We're gonna be focusing now on the general teaching process. And I like to think of you know, the approach, you can use lots of names, but the approach I like to um, use is, is student-centered or holistic, meaning, you know, complete, uh, you know, humanistic approach. When you first start presenting the World Rhythms material, or really any material that's new, I would recommend starting with what we call receptive experiences. In music therapy, we have four main types of experiences. Receptive, which is usually listening and responding to music. Compositional experiences, of course, creating, writing, formalizing. Uh, recreative experiences, where you're basically practicing and then performing a composed piece, an already existing piece, and then improvisation. And I know there's lots of overlap between all those, but a great way to start that's really easy and allows your students to personalize the experience and to have the experience at whatever level of complexity suits them is to just play the music. We give you all the music in recordings in the World Rhythms curriculum. So your students come in or you start the World Rhythms curriculum, play the music, have them move to it. Have them move freely. And then you can give them prompts like connect with the bass drum in your feet or connect with a percussion sound and show that in your hands or vocalize whatever you want along with something in the music that you hear. So I would give general prompts that allow lots of flexibility, but that ask students to stay connected to the music, right? This is not a time to go crazy and do anything, but somehow relating to the music, what do you hear? What are some sounds? And then, you know, later you can start to move into more of a formalized experience. What were the parts of the songs? Were there different parts? 
what was the sequence. You can get into form. Uh, you can move into then singing some of the parts that you're hearing, right? So you can start to move into learning the music, but at first, I would say just experience the music. Have a receptive experience. It's easy for your students, easy for you. And I think there's so much involved in the music. There's going to be plenty for them to tune into and to have that personal experience. And then over time, you can move into the instruction. Okay, up next, a brief overview of the bongos. These are instruments from the World Rhythms Collection um, by Tycoon Percussion, distributed by Hal Leonard. So let's move on and learn something about the bongo drums. So as you may know, because I've said this a zillion times, you want to tune your bongos up pretty high uh, and we want that sound. So what I'm going to do is turn these over. First, I'm going to check. So I'd like to tune the small drum up a little bit. So I'm going to take my wrench, 13 millimeter wrench, and I'm just going to start here and go around in a circle. I'm going to tune each one about a quarter turn. And while I'm at it, since these are new, I want to make sure that this block in the center is tight. So I'm just going to stick this in here and make sure that this is snugged up. I think it is. Let's check the other one. Uh, so if you have some bongos and they're a little bit loose in the center, you can tighten that up. And now let's check this. So that sounds pretty good. I think I want to loosen this drum. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back and show you what this is over here. This is another piece of hardware that comes with the bongos that makes it super easy for your students and you to play the bongos. I've got the bongos in a stand. This is a short stand, a bongo stand, and you can adjust it just like this for different player heights. You can move this down, lock it in place. Uh, there's a memory lock, and then you just adjust it like this. And then what this does is it allows us to play in a comfortable seated position. And of course, when you place the bongos, make sure that you angle them away so the heads would be facing away from the player because that's more like the natural playing position, right? Which would be holding the bongos between your legs. And when you do that, the heads are away. Don't face them towards you. It's not a console. <laughs> so play, uh, aim them away. This is really ergonomic, very comfortable. I can sit here all day with the bongos like this. I don't have to hold them between my legs, which can be a little bit cumbersome for especially children, but anybody really who's not used to holding the bongos. So I'm so glad that we have a bongo stand in the world rhythm set. It's really important. So it allows me to play the drums. So again, these are traditional looking and sounding instruments. They really are made just like the professional bongos that you see in salsa bands and in bands all over the world. So introduce your students early to the real thing. Um, these match like I said, they match the congas and they match all the other drums in the world rhythm set. I'm super excited about it. I hope you can get your hands on some soon. So this, again, are the bongos from the world rhythms set. Something that I think music offers that a lot of other types of experiences don't offer so much is really interesting stories or what we might call the program, right? Here's a song, but what's it about? Why does this song even exist? What is it talking about? Who are these people in the song? What are these animals? What, is the, what are these uh, things? You know, what is the ceremony? Why are they doing that? It's really interesting, of course, and every song pretty much has an interesting cultural context and history. Now, something you can do is introduce the story and introduce the background of the song before you start practicing the song or listening to the song even, or maybe after you listen to it a couple times. You can say, by the way, this song is about this. And in this culture, these people do this because of these reasons. Now, later on, you can start to turn that around and address some of your students, maybe thoughts, feelings, you know, personal um, goals by asking them, this is one of my favorite questions, how do you relate to that? In other words, how you ask your students, think about what that means to you or have you had a similar experience? What do you think they were feeling when they were when this was happening, right? How do you relate to that? Or have you ever known of anyone else that's had that kind of experience? And in that way, 
you can offer an, ex an opportunity for your students to express something personal about themselves. Now, asterisk right here, um, we're not trying to do therapy. You're not a music therapist, um, unless you are. But generally in music education, the goal is to learn and enjoy music. But these kinds of experiences offer you a unique opportunity and platform to discover some things that your students might be going through or some needs they might have. And then what you can do is refer the appropriate professional. Maybe there's a counselor some, or special ed teacher, somebody, one of your colleagues that you could mention, oh, somebody in my class said this, you might wanna look into that, all right? So your job is not to provide therapy, but in music, I've seen so many amazing things, so many things that people, young people, have shared that they don't share in any other setting. Because music is inclusive, they can personalize it, it's a caring experience, and they feel safe. So use that, and now you know one way to use it, and maybe you can refer certain things that need to be referred to your colleagues, and they can take it from there. The cajon is one of the most popular instruments now on the scene. It kind of exploded, just like the ukulele has over the last you know five to 10 years. And there's two sizes of cajones that come with the World Rhythm Set. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit from the unboxing series with you here, but there is more on that series. So if you're interested in cajon, go watch the whole series over there. But here's a little bit from that video about the cajon. Uh, beautiful construction. And this drum has snares, which is the like the flamenco style, like the Spanish style. Um, it adds a little bit of buzz to the sound, a little bit of resonance. This has a wonderful tone. It's full and resonant on the low end. It's got the little buzz sound in there, which brings out the highs and the corner tones, or the slap tones, sometimes we're called. Uh, I love the finish, it's really comfortable, it's the right height for upper elementary students. The good news is there's also a smaller cajon. If you want to do this program with your younger students, first, second, third grade, we make a smaller cajon because this is the one drum that you sit on and we can't change the height. Let's take a look at the small one. Same professional design as the big one, but it's just about that much smaller. I know you can't see the whole thing right now, but um, it is, let me get the overhead view. So what is that, about four-fifths size? And it's super cute. I'm not gonna sit on it right now because I'll disappear out of view, but I wanna play it for you, just play the sound. So it's got the same authentic sound as the big one, just obviously a little bit smaller, a little bit higher pitched. Um, but beautifully made and together. You can use these in an ensemble. If you have younger students, you just use the small one. They can sit on this very comfortably. You could also place this on a stand and have it accessible by uh, older students. Use them side by side, do whatever you want. You've got options and these are both from the World Rhythm set. It's time to look at the instruments in the handheld category for the Latin or Caribbean instrument group in the World Rhythm set. So first of all, we've got something I hope we're all familiar with, which is the maracas. And we picked these maracas because they have a great tone, um, but they're also really appropriately sized for elementary school classrooms, both at the lower elementary and upper elementary level. So they're medium sized, they're small enough for small hands, and they're big enough for the big kids. I love these maracas. I actually have a set of these that I use. Um, really nice, delicate sound. Perfect, all right? You don't need anything else. But let me point out that the handles are wood. They match all the other instruments in the set. Uh, the maracas are blue, which matches the trim on the dundunes and the djembe. So you've got some uniformity there across the set. Next, our wood sound. Each set has metal, wood, and a shaker sound or some sort of rattle. 
Um, in this set, of course, since it's Caribbean, we're going with claves. Everybody knows these. Quick lesson. Leave your hand a little bit open. Put one on the bottom. So the, the hot dog's not quite down in the bun there. Um, and then strike it with the other stick to allow it to, to vibrate. All right, so these are a semi-hardwood set of claves. I like this for classroom. Traditional, we, we'd go with something like rosewood, a really hardwood, but this really for outside playing or a big hall, like a dance hall or something. Indoors, this is perfect. Uh, rounded edges, you're not gonna hurt anything. If a student decides that this is a drumstick, which it isn't, you don't wanna be playing anything with the claves, right? This is not a big drumstick. Um, but if they did decide, you're okay, it's safe, it's got rounded corners. Some claves have sharp, sharper corners. Could be dangerous for your drums like your uh, djembes or thin-headed drums or even something like a timpani if you've got a tom-tom in the room that can leave dents on it. So you're safe in that regard. Um, I love these claves, really great. Perfect for the classroom. Lastly, we're gonna look at our metal sound and because we're in the Caribbean and we're doing uh, songs that are sort of like mambos and cha-cha-chas and all that, we need a mambo bell, <laughs> which is a large cowbell. And in the West African set, we have a small bell, right? Which we, call, we could call a cha-cha bell. Uh, but in this set, we wanted to have a lower voice and we also wanted to give you two different voices overall in the entire set. Because remember, this is a whole complete set with different subsets, one for the Caribbean, one for West Africa, one for Brazil. So in this case, we're giving you a pretty big cowbell. You gotta put your big cowboy, big cowboy, <laughs> I almost said your big boy pants, uh, your big cowbell pants on for this one. Um, it feels great, it's substantial. You've got a nice full low tone. I'm gonna play it softly because I'm using one mic here. You can mute it on the bottom like this. Um, again, you've got a, an appropriate size stick for playing the cowbell. We don't hit these with full size sticks or loomy sticks or rhythm sticks or anything like that. Use a stick like this. Ah, I love it. So that's your cowbell that comes in this set and together you've got all the authentic sounds of your Caribbean, you know, your Latin um, percussion ensemble, salsa ensemble. Your students will love this. They can go online and, and listen to salsa music, Latin music, and they'll see the same instruments, which is what we want. And these will all have a really authentic professional look and feel to them and sound, which is really the most important thing Tambor. One, two, one, two, three, four. One of the ways I like to teach is what I think of as holistic or holographic. Now, what do I mean by holographic? Well, a hologram contains the complete image in any part of the image. I know that's kind of a weird concept, but what that means to me is I can teach a big piece of music from different angles, focusing on different pieces of it, but I know that all those pieces are connected. So let me give you an example. I might just take part of a, of, a, of a verse, of a line, right, of a phrase, and just use that little tiny bit, maybe it's just one word, or even a sound, like the first half of a word, and I might focus on that. For example, there's a song called Zun Zun, right? 
I might just take the word or the sound zoon and play with that and ask my students to play around with that. What is that? I don't know. Nobody knows. It doesn't matter. It's kind of fun to say, zoon. So what can we do with zoon? Or what can we do with bum bum, bum bum, bum bum? You know, part of the dun dun rhythms for kakilambe or morbeasa, the bass drum parts. We can take one musical element and play with it, move it around, put it in our voice, put it in our feet, put it in our body, juxtapose that with one other element. We don't have to go through the whole piece like it's a rehearsal, right? Like we're trying to play all of the parts and then we start and then we move, you know, over time and try to keep all this stuff together. We don't have to do that. So think about your entire piece of music you get all the scores, you know, you're the instructor, so you're gonna know what the totality of the piece is when you have the curriculum. But I would recommend exploding that and then taking one little element at a time, one little element here, and playing with that and letting your students play music, play with those elements separately and keep shifting and moving around and kind of say, let's look at this music from this angle and now let's shift over here. We know, especially with the younger students, it's important to kind of change things up and let them, you know, have different modalities, singing, movement, instruments, body percussion, you know, moving around. And you'd be surprised, you do that a little bit and then whoom, it all comes together somehow magically. <laughs> you know how it comes together. Your students are gonna say, wow, I guess we know this music now. It's just gonna click. And so that's why I like to take a, a holistic approach, a holographic approach, but break things apart and work with individual elements and get a lot of music out of, let your students put their music into those individual simple components. Now we're gonna look at the handheld percussion instruments for the Brazilian set. And one of the instruments I'm really excited about is this. This is the tamborim, which is a small Brazilian hand drum. So it comes in plastic, You've gotta open this up. That's how you know it's fresh. You un unwrap this like you're gonna have dinner at a Chinese restaurant. And then you may need to tune it and look how cute this is. This is a really super tiny tuning wrench. Uh, and you can use this to tune these little lug nuts that run around the drum just like that very gently. I'm just gonna play it for you now and I'm gonna play it with this, which is also very exciting. This is actually an authentic tambourim striker, which um, is a multi-pronged plastic stick like this. And that's traditional. That's something we, we love to have, uh, traditional implements. So here's the tambourim, um, hold it like this. And here's what it sounds like. I'm gonna play it softly because I'm using a sensitive microphone. So this brings a whole level of authenticity, um, ease of play, fun, portable, lightweight, durable, all good things into your classroom. And you can have your kids look this up and they can see tambourines being used in samba bands and they can see some amazing tambourine playing. So that is also very exciting. What do we have next? Let's go with this. I wonder what's in here. All right, this is our tube shaker, also fairly traditional in Brazilian music. So beautiful. All right, so you get a shiny chrome shaker. Really nice sound, not too loud. I'm gonna put this right here, hopefully it won't fall off. And then what else do we have? Um, you know, even though the wood block is not a traditional Brazilian sound, I'll be honest with you, uh, there are some sounds that are similar, but I added this because each one of the sets of hand percussion, we have a metal sound, a shaker sound or rattle sound, and a wood sound uh, at the minimum. So that's why the wood sound is here. You've got a, a scraper which is like the Brazilian heco heco, the bamboo tube scraper. You can do that. And then you can also have a percussive sound. So this becomes a key uh, percussive instrument 
in the ensemble and it adds a syncopated rhythm in most of the arrangements, which is super fun. Now, here's our metal sound for this set. And it comes with a stick, a very small stick, which um, is great because you don't wanna be playing your metal sounds with full-size drumsticks in the classroom. Do you? No. And you don't want many of your students playing <laughs> Uh, metal sounds with full-size sticks. They don't need full-size drumsticks. I don't recommend them. A small stick like this is perfect. This is the agogo, right? Or what we call agogo bells. Um, but if you want to be more traditional sounding, say agogo. And one of the features that I love about this is we did a traditional move here. We put this on a spring so you can squeeze the, the uh, bells together and that allows you to do some authentic playing. How sweet is that? So these are nice size, they're not too big, small enough for your younger students, but still big enough for you know the older um, upper elementary grades and it's not a toy. Um, all these instruments have an authentic look and feel. They are not toys. You know We wanted to keep everything in alignment with uh, what they might find in middle school and high school and beyond so that they can really relate to the music in a serious way, in a traditional way and have a professional feeling about it in their drumming ensembles. Bayana. One, two, one, two, three, four. Always looking for ways to make teaching and learning easier right and more effective one of the tools that you get in the Kalani's world rhythms curriculum is a process called pups pulse under pattern sequence now I'm not going to go through the whole thing here it's in the curriculum but I want to say that it's a student centered or learner centered approach or process to transferring musical information in this case rhythms it could work for melodies too but transferring a rhythm, let's say from one person, the teacher, to the student in a very supportive way where they're held or anchored and grounded to the pulse and then have a receptive experience hearing the pattern and then vocalize the pattern with the pulse and then start to produce the pattern over the pulse. And so what happens in pups is literal transfer from the teacher to the student in terms of roles and responsibilities of either keeping the pulse or playing the rhythm pattern. But if you get the curriculum and you go through, and we, I made a video for you showing the PUPS process. It's a four stage process, pretty simple. If you use that, if you know how to use it, you can then give that process or engage one of your students or all of your students in that process. And my hope is that it'll make it easier for them to learn rhythms and it'll make it easier for you to teach them. Next up is one of my favorite drums, a very popular instrument from the Malinke and Susu people from West Africa. I'm of course talking about the djembe drum and I will be showing you again a little clip from the unboxing World Rhythm Series and also the tuning part of it, part of the tuning um, instructions from the Kalani's World Rhythms curriculum, the book and the downloadable videos. Um, if you can tie your shoe, you can tune a djembe. Trust me, it's a way easier than you think. And it's something that I, as teachers, I want you to know how to do. And it's something that you can pass along to your students very easily. So here is a little bit about the djembe drum. Look at that wood. This is an authentic drum. Your students are gonna love this. They love the wood. They love the natural tuning setup which is rope, which is what all the professionals use. 
all the master djembe players and ensembles all around the world use rope tune drums. Do not be afraid. Uh, you know I'm going to show you how to tune it in the curriculum, so that's not a problem. We also have our lovely goatskin head. Right in here, the backbone, and then you've got your logo on the top. Now this drum just came out of the box, so super, super low, but never fear. I'm gonna crank this up a little bit and be right back. And of course, I show you how to tune this in the curriculum, but look how gorgeous this is. And it's light, lighter than a lot of synthetic drums. All right, we'll be right back after I tune this guy up. Okay, we're all back and tuned. Notice I did a whole row around this drum. And then I actually started a third row here and, and then I tied off the rope around the foot of the drum. If you want instructions on how to specifically tune the drum, go to my website, kalanimusic.com, and there's a video there on how to tune a djembe. And you can also look for it on World Drum Club. Uh, but it's really simple. Again, I wanna just point your attention to the beauty of this instrument. There's no reason you can't provide beautiful, authentic looking and sounding instruments for your students. And I think it's important so that when they go to middle school, high school, and beyond, they're playing instruments that they're used to. They're playing instruments that the, quote, the big people play, the professional instruments. They're affordable. They're lightweight. They're just beautiful. And, you know, and it's a way to honor the traditions and honor the music, which is something I think we all want to do, no matter what instrument group we're using, whether it's um, ukuleles or uh, orchestral instruments or piano, any of that. We want to go for authenticity uh, and quality at the same time. And we can do that. So here's the head. I'm going to direct your attention to the overhead camera. Now what I'm going to do is hold this in the traditional manner. I don't need a stand to play the djembe. In fact, we didn't make a djembe stand specifically because we want the students and you to hold the drum in the traditional way, which is just to place it on the floor and tip it forward a little bit, hold it between your legs. That's all you have to do. If you have students that are having trouble with that, you can put a strap on the drum and sit on the strap and that will keep it from falling forward. But you really don't need to place, place djembe's in stands. Um, so here it is, here's the drum. Beautiful bass tone. Nice, tight, dry, open tone. And a beautiful slap tone. I'm playing it kind of soft because I don't want to blow my microphone out up here. Find a comfortable place to work and tip your djembe on its side, kneeling over it. Find the place where the rope is tied around the shell and free it, loosening the entire tuning rope from around the shell. Find the point at which the tuning rope comes out from the last two vertical ropes that have been flipped over. Bisect the rope and fold it over. You're gonna run it underneath the next two vertical ropes. Pull it down in tight. And then bisecting the tuning rope again, you'll run it back underneath the first of the verticals that you went under. So you've gone under two, over one, and under one, back the other way. Pull it down and tight. Place your knees on the bowl of the drum and pull so you flip the two vertical ropes over. Now we're gonna look at the handheld percussion items in the West African category for the Kalani's World Rhythms instrument sets. Let's start with this guy. What's in here? Each set comes with a metal sound, a wood sound, and a shaker sound. Right here, we have the bell. And every metal sound comes with a small stick, and I recommend a small stick to play your metal sounds indoors. We're, what we're basically using here to emulate the Ken Ken or the West African bell is a small cowbell. So you can also use this for your cha-cha-chas in your Latin ensemble. But what we're gonna do is play it in a certain way in this particular group, um, which is gonna be more indicative of the West African bell sound, which is towards the back of the bell, the top of the bell here, uh, with the tip of the stick. And that's gonna be our kind of more West African bell sound. If we wanted to do the cha-cha-cha sound, we can come out here. And have a beautiful cowbell sound. So that's our cowbell. 
and we want to use small sticks, right? So it comes with an appropriate size stick. Next, we've got uh, kashishi, which are typically going to be found in a Brazilian category overall. But these instruments are, uh, they originate in West Africa. And over there, they're called seke seke. And they, they have a little bit uh, different design, but we are substituting the kashishi, which work almost exactly. They sound almost exactly like the seke seke. So here we've got a woven uh, basket shaker with coconut. Uh, on the bottom, and some sort of filling. And that is just a super sweet sound. So hold them from the top like this, and just play straight down like that. You can even do rhythms. Play like that, really easy. Do not play them like this, okay? Don't let your students do that. I know they wanna do it, you might wanna do it. Don't do it, play them like this. All right, so that's our seke seke. We're actually using kashishi, but don't tell anyone. Same sound. All right, and last on the list for our um, percussion for the West African set is an instrument that is um, creating the sound of the cream, which is a wooden drum. It's a, it's a log drum. And what we decided to do for this one is use the temple block because it gives a similar sound. Again, we want to be sensitive to budgets and we want to have instruments that are going to be common and that you can use for many other things besides the World Rhythms curriculum. So we're giving you a high quality, beautiful wood block and notice that it matches all the other drums in the set. So everything has a uniform look. You can put it on a stand if you want. There's a mounting bracket right here. I'm going to hold it in my hand right now, so I'm going to tighten this up. And now I can play, that, play it with this uh, little wooden mallet. You generally want to play it on the top. You can play it on the edge a little bit. You can even try experimenting with the edge of the stick to have different sounds. Put it on a stand, put it on a table, have your students explore different timbres and tones on the tone block. Maybe that's why it's called the tone block or temple block. All right, either, either title works, uh, tone block, temple block. Beautiful sound. It adds a whole um, authentic dimension. So if you want, go listen to the recordings listen to some other recordings of West African music and see if you can find the Kreen, which is a, a large wood sound played with sticks. So we're really keeping you in an authentic zone, but doing it in a way that's easy and affordable. All right, so those are the instruments in the West African group. Kakilambe. One, two, one, two, three, four. Every music making experience that you have with your students is an opportunity for them to create. It's an opportunity for them to arrange music, maybe compose a little, to improvise, to play music. So even if it's at the very beginning of the process of learning the curriculum, it's, it's just new, they're not really familiar with it, you can still give them opportunities to create a quick little arrangement slash performance, right? And if you're an ORF teacher, you're very familiar with this. But I would say that every time you get together and you play with the World Rhythms curriculum, you play with the instruments, you play with the songs, the um, individual drum parts, the sounds, the timbres, give your students um, a little bit of time to 
take a couple little elements and it doesn't have to be the whole thing. It can be just, just the melody or just the words or just the rhythm or even just a set of sounds and give them, give them a chance to compose something and formalize it, you know, maybe perform it quickly for the other students. You can break into groups if you want, uh, pairs or dyads or small groups. And um, you can do that at every stage. And I think that's important. Um, you can get out your phone or recorder and my, you know, students love to do this. I even do this with some of my music therapy clients. I'll record something uh, and they love it. You know, people love to put together a little performance and then hear it back. So I would recommend doing that at every point. So it's not about, you know, you having to get the whole thing going, getting all that three ring circus of singing, strumming, drumming, dancing, you know, all the things. Um, maybe eventually, you know, down the road, you can take the World Rhythms uh, songs and create your own opera. You could have a whole World Rhythms opera. And I talk about that in the book and I give you some some guidance and some advice on how to do that. That would be for a concert, right? Maybe for a spring concert, fall concert. And you could take all these songs and get all the stories. You can have a, you know, actors and lines and make up a whole play. So that's the big picture. But every session, how about a little mini performance just based on what they like from the elements of the curriculum. Okay. That's what I have for you in this presentation. I hope you're excited about the World Rhythms curriculum. We're really proud of it, and we're hoping that it's gonna bring you and your students years of enjoyment. If you'd like to reach out to me, my website is kalanimusic.com. My YouTube channel is World Drum Club. If you'd like more instruction, you wanna get some tips, or just have fun watching me play all kinds of crazy instruments, <laughs> you can go to World Drum Club on YouTube. I wanna thank everybody at Hal Leonard, uh, for putting this together and inviting me to co-present with my peers. Thanks to all the dealers and thank you to all the teachers who are going out there and helping our young people learn and appreciate music so they can have a lifetime of enjoyment. Bless you and all your families. I hope to see you all soon. I'm Kalani. Thank you for watching.